So today I'm going to show you how to convert pixel values to real world engineering units and measurements by calibrating your Cognex camera. Just set up a grid and select an image, select your range of focus and your calibration type to X, Y scale. I want you to choose millimeters and open up your spreadsheet view. Now here we're going to be selecting four points, uh, four corners of a 10 millimeter square. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type cross and enter and this is going to open up the property panel for the cross structure. I'm going to pick the bottom left hand corner and this is going to be 0 0.00 on our real world measurements. I'm going to select the absolute center of this dark line intersection or as close to as possible. I've allowed myself a variance of maybe uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeters. Because it's a quick demonstration, this is how you go about it. I've added two extra columns there for the X and Y positions. These, as I just mentioned, are going to be the real world location. Um, they'll be our millimeter values for comparison. So I'm going to do uh, the other three corners here, just like the first. I'll try to get it as central as possible. Ideally, you'd have very identifi identifiable points to look for. I'm happy with the cross section. The center of the cross is there. So top right hand corner, as you might guess, that's going to be X value 10, Y value 10. And the next one's going to be X value zero, pardon me, X value 10, Y value zero. So you double click cross when the property window opens and it'll bring you to the image. You can either do that or hard code in the values, but this is how you do it. There's something wrong there. It's the other way around. X value 10, Y value 0. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to do a calibration. This is going to pair the pixel locations, the row and column, with the real world locations of X and Y. This will train the camera. So we'll be able to get results in the new calibrated measurements. camera is quite good at picking up these things itself but if you're manually doing it this is the type of process you'd go through so here I'm making sure I've selected the right cells uh, with respect to each other and I'm going to click show um, inputs and results graphics they're useful to see be careful of not selecting it too much because then your inspection screen will be too busy. So now I'm going to try find a line, a straight line, um, like a transition from dark to white or, or white to dark. And I'm going to measure it. And I'm going to try select a 10 millimeter line or there or thereabouts. So start with your selection panel. Oh, Sorry, the function there is called uh, find line. You press enter and it'll bring up this property window. So I'm just going to select an area which is inside your uh, region of focus. That green graph you saw at the bottom is the transitions from dark to light. And it has a tolerance of 25 currently. You can change these. At the moment you can see that I'm allowing for an angle variance of 10 
degrees and I have increased the line thickness to three pixels to really make the thick lines stand out. Okay, I'm quite happy that it's picked up uh, a strong transition. So I'm going to reduce my um, uh, ex expected edge range. And once I'm quite happy with that, I'm going to type a function or a structure which is called trans edges to world. Type that into an empty cell and press enter and it'll ask you to select the calibration cell, which I just done, and then it'll ask you to select the edge calculation cell. And once you've done that, you can see now that the measurement is both in pixel value and then beneath it is the real world value. So now I'm going to do a measurement, it's called point to point measurement. So I'm going to select the row and column of the first point, the top of the line, and I'm going to select the bottom of the line, and the distance there is 10.4. So now I'm going to fine tune this and really look at the green line here um, to make sure that it's within the square. It's a little bit finicky, but it's kind of interesting to watch all the same. So here I'm going to pick the very, very top of the dark cells and the same here. I do this because it's much easier to pick that transition than the center of those lines. It's still going to be 10 millimeters or there, thereabouts, hopefully 10.027. That's, that's what I was looking for. I'm quite happy with that. That's how you would calibrate your camera to uh, produce results in real world engineering units. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you.